in the captivating world of the stage musical The King and I. Yul Brynner is an unmistakably familiar presence. Sporting a distinctive shaved head, Brynner crafted a unique personal brand, endearing himself to countless fans. But tragically, his life met an untimely demise due to the relentless grip of cigarettes. Curious about what Brynner's addiction truly cost him? Join us in this video as we explore Yul Brynner's uncontrollable addiction cost him everything. Yul Brynner's artistic genesis from Vladivostok to Paris. Yul Brynner, originally named Julie Borosovic Brenner, entered the world on July 11, 1920, in Vladivostok, Russia. His father, Boris Brenner, hailed from Swiss-German descent and worked as a mining engineer, while his mother, Marisha Dimitrovina, was a Russian actress with Mongolian roots. Growing up, Brenner's fascination with the performing arts blossomed under the influence of his mother's acting career, propelling him towards the enchanting realm of theater and entertainment. The young Brenner, captivated by storytelling, character exploration, and the captivating power of the stage, often accompanied his mother to the theater. There, he absorbed the magic of live storytelling, igniting a passion that led him to participate in school plays and local productions. These early experiences not only honed his natural talents, but also unveiled his potential as a performer. In his late teens, fueled by a desire to delve deeper into the arts, Brenner embarked on a significant journey to Paris. The city's vibrant cultural scene and renowned theater community provided an ideal environment for him to immerse himself in the craft. Eager to learn and grow, Brenner enrolled at the prestigious Academy de Dance, focusing on honing his skills in dance, movement, and stagecraft. Simultaneously, he took acting classes, refining his technique and broadening his understanding of dramatic performance. To support himself financially and stay connected to his passion, Brenner embraced various jobs within the theater realm. From working as a trapeze artist and musician to even trying his hand at puppeteering, he seized every opportunity to be part of the world he cherished. These diverse experiences not only sustained him, but also allowed him to observe and learn from other talented artists. During his Parisian sojourn, Brenner formed valuable connections with influential figures in the theater community, including directors, writers, and fellow actors who recognized his immense talent and dedication. These connections would prove invaluable, shaping his career trajectory and opening doors for future opportunities. Armed with a wealth of experience and training, Yul Brynner embarked on his professional acting journey. His stage debut in 1941 marked the beginning, with a role in a French production of the musical comedy Seal Delete. This marked the initial step in a remarkable career that would see Brynner become a celebrated actor on both stage and screen. As we delve into Yul Brynner's early life and artistic journey, have you ever considered the profound impact of familial influences on artistic pursuits? Let us dive deeper. The transformative power of a gifted guitar. In the year 1927, Yul Brynner, accompanied by his mother and elder sister Vera, born on January 17, 1916, and passing away on December 13, 1967, embarked on a momentous journey that would shape the course of their lives. Leaving Vlados, Russia, they set sail for Harbin, China, marking a significant chapter filled with transformative experiences. This relocation was prompted by the family's quest for stability amidst the geopolitical uncertainties of the time. Upon arriving in Harbin, Yule and Vera found themselves enrolled in a school run by the Young Men's Christian Association. This educational venture in a foreign land marked a crucial period of adaptation to new surroundings and cultural influences. The family navigated through the challenges of this relocation, laying the groundwork for the Brinners to embrace diverse experiences. In the year 1930, a pivotal moment unfolded in Yule Brinner's life when his father, Boris Brinner, presented him with a birthday gift that would set the stage for his artistic journey. This gift was a captivating acoustic guitar, a token that would significantly impact Brynner's creative exploration. The introduction of the guitar became a catalyst for his burgeoning passion for music, unleashing a cascade of artistic development that would shape his future. The guitar, accompanied by subsequent music lessons, became an integral part of Brynner's artistic development. The instrument not only allowed him to express himself creatively, 
but also opened doors to a realm of possibilities in the world of music. The profound impact of this gift and the subsequent musical education left an indelible mark on Brinner's artistic identity. As we delve into this chapter of Yul Brynner's life, one cannot help but marvel at the resilience of a family adapting to new environments and the pivotal role that a simple birthday gift played in shaping a future icon. Have you ever reflected on the influence of early life experiences in molding artistic passions? Can you imagine the transformative power of a single instrument in unlocking creative potential? Yul Brynner's musical mastery and artistic flourish in the City of Lights. Empowered by his innate curiosity, creativity, and imagination, Yul Brynner's focus evolved towards mastering the intricate art of guitar playing. His journey extended beyond mere technique, delving into the vast realms of classical and contemporary music. During this pivotal period, his elder sister Vera emerged as a significant influence. Trained as a classical opera singer, Vera assumed the role of Brynner's mentor in the enchanting world of music. Under her guidance, he embarked on a rigorous course of study, molding him into an accomplished guitar player and singer. In 1933, with the ominous specter of war looming between China and Japan, Yul Brynner, his sister Vera, and their mother made a bold decision to relocate to Paris. This marked a crucial turning point in Brynner's life, initiating a transformative period that would witness the flourishing of his artistic talents and the establishment of lifelong connections in the vibrant cultural milieu of the French capital. Brynner's exploration of music became not just a technical pursuit, but a profound artistic journey shaped by the guidance of his sister. The mentorship provided by Vera went beyond the mere mechanics of playing an instrument, delving into the emotive and expressive aspects of music. This dynamic partnership between brother and sister fostered a rich artistic environment that fueled Brynner's passion and innovation. As Brynner and his family embarked on their journey to Paris, they stepped into a world brimming with cultural richness and artistic vibrancy. The decision to move to the heart of France marked a deliberate choice to immerse themselves in an environment that would nurture Brynner's burgeoning talents and provide fertile ground for artistic exploration. Paris, known for its cultural diversity and artistic dynamism, became the backdrop for Brynner's artistic evolution. The city's thriving cultural environment, encompassing music, theater, and visual arts, became a playground for Brynner's creativity. The eclectic and cosmopolitan atmosphere of Paris allowed him to forge connections with fellow artists, expanding his artistic horizons and paving the way for future collaborations. In this new chapter of Brynner's life, the City of Lights became more than a geographical location. It became a crucible for the fusion of diverse artistic influences, shaping Brynner's identity as a musician and performer. The transformative power of this period in Paris echoed throughout his career, leaving an indelible mark on the trajectory of his artistic journey. Reflecting on Brynner's adventure, one is drawn to the significance of mentorship, the pursuit of artistic excellence, and the impact of cultural immersion on creative expression. Rhythmic Beginnings On the 15th of June, 1935, a young Yul Brynner, aged just 15, took his initial steps onto the stage at the Heritage Cabaret in Paris. This moment signaled the beginning of his public performances, where not only did he showcase remarkable guitar skills, but he also serenaded the audience in both Russian and Roma languages. The initial triumph at the Hermitage opened the doors to the vibrant nightlife of Paris, propelling Brynner into a world of musical expression. As Brynner's journey unfolded, he evolved into a regular performer at various nightclubs, often sharing the spotlight with his sister and presenting a captivating fusion of Russian and Roma songs. Amidst his growing music career, Brynner also remained committed to his education, attending a lycée in Paris, where he delved into the details of the French language. Yet, his strong-willed nature occasionally manifested in physical confrontations, earning him recognition within his school community. In the summer of 1936, Brynner embraced another facet of his versatility by taking on the role of a lifeguard at a resort beach in Lave. During this time, he ventured into the world of the French circus, demonstrating his adaptability by training as a trapeze acrobat. Unfortunately, this daring pursuit resulted in an unforeseen back injury, 
causing excruciating pain and leading him down a path of reliance on narcotics. This marked the onset of a challenging period in Brynner's young life. Amid the struggles, fate intervened in the form of an encounter with Jen Kako, a prominent figure in the Parisian artistic scene. Kako's introduction thrust Brynner into a circle of celebrities that included iconic figures like Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Marcel Maro, and Jean Marais. This wide-ranging and unconventional environment became a transformative backdrop that would shape Brynner's future ventures in acting, directing, and producing. Immersed in this vibrant artistic community, Brynner found inspiration and mentorship from some of the greatest minds in the creative world. Encounters with celebrities like Picasso and Dali left an indelible mark on Brynner's artistic vision, influencing his future pursuits in the realms of acting and production. This chapter of Yul Brynner's life unfolds as a captivating narrative, weaving together diverse experiences, from his early performances in Parisian cabarets to his unexpected and daring stint under the circus tent, Rise to Stardom. The journey of Yul Brynner's illustrious career began with a resounding success in the late 1940s, marking the commencement of what would prove to be a promising trajectory. Born in Russia, Brynner set his sights on the United States, where he sought to immerse himself in the world of acting and unlock a realm of opportunities. His inaugural breakthrough unfolded on the grand stage of Broadway in 1946, with a significant role in the play Loot Song. Brynner's portrayal of a Chinese prince garnered critical acclaim, establishing him as a versatile actor with the unique ability to seamlessly embody diverse characters. His magnetic presence and intensity on stage captivated audiences, setting the stage for what would become a remarkable career. The pivotal moment arrived in 1951 when Brynner secured the role of King Mongkut of Siam in the musical The King and I, composed by Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein, the second. With a commanding presence, regal demeanor, and a powerful singing voice, Brynner brought the character to life in a captivating manner. The role not only showcased his exceptional talent, but also became synonymous with his name, propelling him into the realm of stardom. Buoyed by his success on Broadway, Brynner transitioned seamlessly into the world of film. In 1956, he reprised his role as King Mongkut, in the cinematic adaptation of The King and I, earning him an Academy Award for Best Actor. This accolade solidified his status as one of Hollywood's most gifted and versatile performers. In the classic Western film The Magnificent Seven, 1960, he left an indelible mark with his memorable portrayal of Chris Adams, a stoic and skilled gunslinger. Brynner's commanding presence and unwavering determination contributed to the enduring popularity of the film, firmly establishing him as a leading figure in the Western genre. Cecil B. DeMille's epic biblical film, The Ten Commandments, 1956, witnessed Brynner delivering a powerful performance as Pharaoh Ramses II. His portrayal of the ambitious and conflicted ruler was nothing short of captivating, capturing the nuances of Ramses' arrogance, insecurity, and eventual downfall. The magnetic presence and intensity Brynner infused into the role elevated it to one of his most memorable and acclaimed performances. Brynner's foray into science fiction came with Michael Crichton's directorial debut, Westworld, 1973, where he portrayed the gunslinger, an android malfunctioning in a futuristic amusement park. Brynner's captivating and relentless menace, coupled with his trademark bald head and steely determination, transformed the gunslinger into an iconic and unforgettable antagonist in the sci-fi genre. The actor's reputation and talent paved the way for collaborations with visionary directors and renowned actors, further enhancing his impact on the industry. Brynner had the privilege of working with directors who recognized his exceptional abilities, casting him in significant roles that showcased the breadth of his talent. Cinematic Adventure into Post-Apocalyptic Brilliance A notable addition to Yul Brynner's later career filmography came with The Ultimate Warrior, which hit theaters in 1975. This post-apocalyptic action film featured Brynner in the role of Carson, a resilient and resourceful warrior navigating a perilous and disorderly world. The film stands out as it not only highlights Brynner's physical prowess, but also demonstrates his skill in portraying intricate emotions, 
even amidst the chaos of intense action sequences. The Ultimate Warrior served as a showcase of Brenner's versatility as an actor, proving that he could excel in genres that extended beyond the historical dramas and musicals that had primarily defined his earlier career. In this cinematic venture, Brenner's portrayal of Carson goes beyond the surface of a tough and resourceful warrior. His performance delves into the depths of the character, revealing layers of complexity and resilience. The post-apocalyptic setting adds an intriguing backdrop, allowing Brenner to immerse himself in a world fraught with danger and uncertainty. As Carson, Brenner brings to life a character who not only relies on physical strength, but also navigates the emotional and psychological challenges of a chaotic environment. The film becomes a canvas for Brenner to showcase his acting range, proving that he can effectively convey a character's internal struggles while engaging in dynamic and action-packed sequences. The Ultimate Warrior adds a new dimension to Brenner's filmography, expanding his repertoire beyond the familiar territories of historical dramas and musicals. It marks a chapter where Brenner, with his seasoned acting skills, ventures into the realm of post-apocalyptic storytelling, contributing to the diversity of his career. This film, in essence, becomes a testament to Yul Brynner's enduring talent and adaptability as an actor. It underscores his ability to tackle different genres and breathe life into characters across various cinematic landscapes, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of his late career contributions to the world of film. Collaboration, family bonds, and unwavering dedication. Yul Brynner, the iconic actor on stage and screen, embarked on a remarkable journey that not only showcased his dramatic prowess, but also left an enduring impact on the realms of cinema and family life. One of the pivotal chapters in Brynner's cinematic saga unfolded with his collaboration with the legendary Cecil B. DeMille in The Ten Commandments. This partnership became a canvas for Brynner to exhibit his dramatic range and screen command. Under DeMille's expert guidance, Brynner brought his character to life with depth and intensity showcasing a mastery of the dramatic arts. The collaboration not only elevated Brynner's status as a versatile actor, but also contributed to the cinematic grandeur of the epic film. Equally significant was Brynner's collaboration with John Sturgis in The Magnificent Seven, an iconic Western film that stands as a cornerstone of the genre. Brynner's on-screen presence and command captivated audiences, solidifying his status as a leading figure in Western cinema. The film's enduring popularity is a testament to Brynner's contribution to the genre's legacy. Brynner, a thespian of the highest order, shared the screen with some of the finest actors of his time. These collaborations weren't mere partnerships. They were a symphony of talent, creating memorable on-screen chemistry and delivering captivating performances. In The King and I, Brynner's dynamic interactions with Deborah Kerr added layers of depth and emotional resonance to their characters' relationship, elevating the film to a timeless classic. However, it was Brynner's collaboration with Steve McQueen in The Magnificent Seven that etched an indelible mark in the Western genre. Their on-screen partnership resulted in a compelling dynamic, forming a bond that transcended the screen to become legendary in Western cinematic history. Brynner's ability to forge convincing and captivating partnerships with fellow actors showcased not only his adaptability, but also his integral role in the success of these cinematic endeavors. Beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Yul Brynner's personal life unfolded with equal significance. His first marriage to actress Virginia Gilmore in 1944 marked the beginning of a familial chapter. Despite the challenges that led to their divorce in 1960, Brynner remained committed to maintaining a strong bond with his son, Yul Brynner II. Taking an active role in his upbringing, Brynner fostered a close father-son relationship, demonstrating his dedication to family values. Family life held profound importance for Brynner, and he prioritized creating a stable and nurturing environment for his son. Known for being a loving and involved father, Brynner often took his son on film sets, exposing him to the captivating world of acting. Yul Brynner's dedication to family values left an indelible impact on his son, reflecting his commitment to his role as a parent, love, loss, and the lingering impact of choices. 
The tread of Yul Brynner's life unfolded through a series of subsequent marriages, each contributing to the rich mosaic of his journey. His second marriage in 1960 led him to Doris Kleiner, an American Chilean socialite. Despite the union lasting until 1967, the marriage ended in divorce, marking a significant period that introduced Brynner to new cultural and social dimensions. In 1971, Brynner entered into his third marriage with Jacqueline Thion de la Chaume, a French socialite and former fashion model. This marital chapter endured until 1981, defined by mutual respect and a shared appreciation for each other's interests. A new chapter unfolded on April 4, 1983, as 62-year-old Brynner married his fourth and final wife, Kathy Lee, in September 1983. However, as Brynner navigated the complexities of love, an ominous shadow loomed over his health. On September 1983, during the national tour of his iconic performance in The King and I, Brynner faced a sudden health setback. A sore throat and vocal changes led to a diagnosis of inoperable lung cancer, a cruel consequence of his heavy smoking habit, which had begun at the tender age of 12. Despite quitting smoking in 1971, Brynner's promotional photos often depicted him with a cigarette, a lingering proof of a past indulgence. Forced to take a hiatus during the national tour, as radiation therapy damaged his throat, making singing and speaking arduous. Yet, Brynner's dedication to his craft remained unyielding. Even amid intense cancer treatments, he continued to perform in his one-man show, The King and I. Beyond the stage, Brynner utilized his platform to raise awareness about the dangers of smoking, speaking openly about his regrets regarding the habit. As Brynner's health further declined, the tragic denouement unfolded on October 10, 1985. Diagnosed with lung cancer, a disease unknowingly battled for years, Brynner's passing added an extra layer of sorrow to his final moments. Despite being perceived as a strong and resilient individual, Brynner succumbed to the devastating impact of smoking-related illness. What makes Brynner's death particularly touching is the timing. Only hours before taking his last breath, he recorded a powerful public service announcement for the American Cancer Society. Speaking directly to the camera, he emphasized the urgency of quitting smoking and caring for one's health. This haunting timing added an emotional layer to Brynner's passing, a man who, in his final moments, shared a potent message about the consequences of his own choices. Yule Brynner's death served as a somber reminder of the devastating impact of smoking and the crucial importance of making healthier choices. His legacy endures not only in the annals of entertainment, but also as a cautionary tale, echoing his plea for a healthier and smoke-free existence, unraveling the layers of a whimsical heritage. In the twilight of his life, Yule Brynner embraced a persona that was both playful and mysterious, finding joy in crafting fantastical tales and playfully exaggerating his background for the media. With a mischievous sense of humor, he spun narratives that ventured into the playful, often claiming improbable origins, such as being born Tai John to a Mongol father and a Roma mother on the Russian island of Sakhin. This theatricality extended off-screen, as Brynner adopted whimsical alter egos like Julius Brer, Jules Brer, and Yu Brer, adding an element of drama to his public image. Amidst these playful tales, the reality of Yul Brynner's true heritage was a captivating mosaic. His father, Boris Julevich Breiner, was a mining engineer and inventor of Swiss-German and Russian descent, graduating from the Mining University in St. Petersburg in 1910. This intellectual and professional legacy shaped the family's trajectory. Brynner's grandfather, Jules Brer, originally a Swiss citizen, ventured to Vladivostok in the 1870s, establishing a prosperous import-export company that contributed to the family's prosperity. On the maternal side, Brynner's paternal grandmother, Natalia Yosifov Kutova, added further diversity to the family tree. A native of Ulan Uda, she was a Eurasian with partial Buryat ancestry, introducing a layer of cultural richness to Brynner's heritage. The maternal lineage added yet another dimension to Brynner's diverse heritage. His mother, Marusha Dmitrievna, born Marusha Blova, emerged from the Russian intelligentsia, embodying a fusion of intellectual and artistic pursuits. She devoted herself to the world of theater and music, 
pursuing studies as an actress and singer. According to Brinner, Marusha allegedly had ties to the Russian Roma community, infusing the family's background with a touch of Romani heritage. This added another layer to the already complex tread of Brinner's ancestry. In essence, Yul Brinner's heritage was a rich mosaic, combining Swiss, German, Russian, Mongolian, Roma, and Buryat influences. While his playful storytelling and playful alter egos added a layer of mystery to his public image, the true narrative of his origins was a captivating journey through a multitude of cultural threads and family legacies. The mystery of Brinner's background was not just a product of his fantastical tales, it was a reflection of the diverse and fascinating tread of his true heritage, Yul Brynner's battle. In the records of Yul Brynner's life, a gripping saga unfolds, marked by a victorious ascent from the dangerous depths of drug addiction and a persistent struggle against the clutches of tobacco. The year was 1937 when Brynner's attempt to manage spinal pain took a dangerous turn, leading him into the treacherous path of opium and other drugs. What began as a quest for pain relief metamorphosed into a harrowing battle with substance abuse, ensnaring the young Brinner in its formidable grip by the age of 17. Witnessing their beloved family member trapped in the throes of addiction, Brinner's family intervened with unwavering determination. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, they embarked on a mission to rescue him from the clutches of drug abuse. The decision was made to seek treatment, a pivotal moment that would alter the course of Brinner's life. His journey to recovery led him to Lausanne, Switzerland, where a specialized clinic awaited, designed to guide individuals grappling with the formidable adversary of drug addiction. This marked the beginning of a transformative year-long sojourn, during which Brinner received not only therapeutic care, but also medical attention at the esteemed Lausanne University Hospital. At the heart of Brinner's recovery was the instrumental role played by his aunt Vera Dmitrievna Blavova Briner, a seasoned physician. Her commitment to his well-being extended beyond the conventional, incorporating various therapeutic measures, including the innovative approach of hypnotherapy. Under her vigilant guidance and the comprehensive care he received, Brinner emerged from the Swiss clinic unshackled from the chains of illicit drug use. This period of rehabilitation served as a profound turning point, imprinting a lasting impact on Brinner's health and fortitude. The experience not only enabled him to vanquish his drug dependency, but also instilled in him a newfound strength to resist the siren call of addiction. Brinner's triumphant emergence from the drug abyss showcased his resilience, underscored by the steadfast support of his family. Yet, as one chapter closed, another unfolded. Despite overcoming the harrowing clutches of drug addiction, Brinner faced a new adversary cigarette smoking. In the latter stages of his life, the habit took root and began to insidiously affect his well-being. The triumph over one vice did not grant immunity from the encroaching perils of another. The battle with smoking presented its own set of challenges, emphasizing the complex nature of overcoming addiction and the perpetual commitment required to safeguard one's health. In the grand tread of Yul Brynner's life, this narrative illuminates not only the arduous journey through the abyss of drug addiction, but also the ongoing struggle against tobacco's deceptive fascination. It serves as proof of Brinner's indomitable spirit, the unwavering bonds of family support, and the complexities inherent in the perpetual quest for well-being. Journey of Discovery At 1938, a new chapter began in Yule Brinner's life when his mother received a devastating diagnosis of leukemia. Faced with the urgency of her medical condition, Brinner and his mother moved temporarily to China, hoping for support from his father, who was providing for the family. In Harbin, Brinner's father, Boris Brer, had a successful trade business and lived with his second wife, actress Katerina Ivanova Cordova, formerly of the Moscow Art Theater. Recognizing Brinner's potential, Cordova became an unexpected mentor, offering him his first acting lessons. Drawing from her experiences at the Moscow Art Theater, she guided Brinner on vocal modulation and body language, introducing him to the fundamental principles of Konstantin Stanislavsky's school of acting and the innovative ideas of Michael Chekhov, the founder of his acting school. Initially, Boris Brer had envisioned a management role for his son in the family business. However, 
Witnessing Brynner's genuine happiness in acting, he reconsidered. Cordova recommended Brynner to study acting with her former partner, Michael Chekhov. This recommendation, along with support from his father and stepmother, fueled Brynner's confidence to pursue a career in acting. With a letter of recommendation from Cornova and financial assistance from his father, he set out to study acting, embracing a new sense of purpose. This pivotal moment marked a turning point in Brynner's life, steering him away from a predetermined business path toward his passion for the performing arts. However, amid these budding aspirations, his mother's worsening health remained a significant concern. Her illness required specialized medical treatment available only in the United States. In an affirmation of his devotion and familial responsibility, Brynner embarked on a long and challenging journey across the world, accompanying his ailing mother to seek the necessary medical care. At 1940, armed with limited English proficiency, Brynner and his mother embarked on a life-altering journey to the United States, sailing across the Pacific Ocean and arriving in San Francisco on October 25, 1940. Their final destination was the bustling metropolis of New York City, where Brynner's sister Vera had already established herself. Vera, a talented singer, later achieved success on Broadway in 1950, starring in The Consul, and made her mark on television in the titular role of Carmen. During World War II, Brynner contributed to the war effort in multiple capacities, with his fluency in French, he worked as a radio announcer and commentator for the U.S. Office of War Information, broadcasting messages to occupied France. Additionally, he lent his voice to the Voice of America, transmitting messages in Russian to the Soviet Union. Simultaneously, Brynner pursued his passion for acting in Connecticut, studying under the guidance of Russian actor Michael Chekhov. It is evidence of his multifaceted abilities, he also took on roles as a truck driver and stagehand for Michael Chekhov's theater company. The connection to Chekhov was established through the recommendation of Brynner's stepmother, Katerina Ivanovna Cordova, who had been an acting partner of Chekhov at the Moscow Art Theater. By the age of 21, Brynner had accumulated a wealth of international experiences, traversing continents and immersing himself in diverse cultures. These extensive travels undoubtedly played a role in shaping his worldview and artistic sensibility, contributing to the rich tread of his creativity. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.